Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 2nd of July. One soldier killed, five Lashkar terrorists gunned down in India's Jammu and Kashmir. US forces leave Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan after 20 years. And domestic flights resume in Nepal after two months gap as lockdown curbs ease. And now for all the details. Five terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba were neutralized by security forces on Friday in an encounter in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. An Indian Army soldier also lost his life in the operation which was still underway till the last reports came in. At least five Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists and a security personnel were killed in an encounter in India's northern Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory, police said on Friday. Based on specific inputs, a surge operation was launched by security forces in the Hanjin Rajpura area of the district, ensued by a gunfight during which an army soldier was killed. Kashmir Zone Police in a tweet confirmed District Commander of Proscribed Terror Outfit LET, Nishaz Loon and one Pakistani terrorist were amongst five killed in the encounter. The operation was still going on till the last reports came in and further details are awaited. We unfortunately lost uh, an army Hawaldar uh, last night uh, during the course of uh, firefight. A police army and CRP is on the ground, they are winding up the operation. Kashmir is a Muslim-majority region at the heart of decades of hostility between India and Pakistan. India accuses Pakistan of supporting militancy in the area. Pakistan denies the charge, saying their support is only moral and not financial or logistical. In news from Afghanistan, American forces pulled out of the Bagram Air Base on Friday, one of the biggest military bases in Afghanistan as part of an agreement with the Taliban, symbolizing the end of the US-led mission in the country. Afghans welcomed the move, hoping it will lead to peace, while experts have warned withdrawal of foreign forces may descend the country into a civil war. After nearly 20 years, the U.S. military has left Afghanistan's Bagram Air Base under an agreement with the Taliban, officials said on Friday. The withdrawal of the U.S. troops from the base, the epicenter of its war to remove the Taliban and hunt down the Al-Qaeda perpetrators of the 9-11 attacks, symbolizes the end of the U.S. military involvement in the country. The final withdrawal of foreign forces from Afghanistan was officially set for September 11 by U.S. President Joe Biden. Residents of Afghan capital Kabul welcomed the move on Friday while expressing concern about the current situation and hopes for peace. Experts have, however, warned withdrawal of foreign forces may descend the country into a civil war as clashes between Afghan government forces and the Taliban have intensified in parts of the country while peace talks have remained stalled. American باید ووزي ده افغانستان افغانستان کې باید سوله راشي او مونږ ډیر په بد حالات کې مونږ ټول راته تختیدل یو د خپل ولسوالۍ نه ولسوالۍ مو سکوت شوی دی او وو ولسوالۍ په پکتیا کې سکوت شوی دی د طالبانو په ولکا کې دی د ډیولپمنټ کیم ا ډی افټر یو اس ټیټ ډیپارټمنټ سپوکس پرسن نیټ پرایز ټولډ ا نیوز بریفنګ دټ ایټ از ابسولوټلی نوټ دی کیس دټ واشنګټن انټینډز ټو ابانډن افغانستان despite the planned troop withdrawal, but will continue to maintain a diplomatic presence in Kabul, he said. More on news from Afghanistan. Afghan authorities burned about 67 tons of illegal drugs that were seized in capital Kabul, the latest in the fight against illicit drug trafficking. Afghanistan has long been the world's leading supplier of opium, providing about 90% of the global output.
Afghan counter narcotic authorities destroyed 67 tons of illegal drugs on Thursday that had been seized in capital Kabul. The confiscated substances, including raw opium, hashish, chemicals used to process opium into heroin, liquor and tablet K. Representatives of the government and UN offices on drugs and crimes attended the incineration in Kabul. UNODC has stood firm with the Afghan government in its fight against opiate trade. For the past decade, Afghanistan has accounted for an estimated 85% of global illicit opiates, fueling instability and insurgency, transnational organized crime, drug consumption, and HIV AIDS. <laughs> The Namnei, the Subatei, the Jaraimu del Uredo, Au, the Mapiai Banduno, the Takuye, Baishi. Afghanistan has long been the world's leading supplier of opium, providing about 90% of the global output. In recent years, the country has produced thousands of tons more than that the entire global demand for the drug. Moving on. With picturesque landscapes and cultural diversity, Gilgit Baltistan is the ultimate tourist destination. However, the decades-long illegal occupation by the Pakistan government has brought the entire region to the brink. Locals blame Islamabad's unwillingness to develop the tourism sector as the reason for its downfall. The Gizer district of remote Himalayan region of Gilgit Baltistan is home to diverse flora and fauna and features stunning valleys and crystal blue lakes. However, locals blame Islamabad's indifference to boost the tourism sector in the illegally occupied region has made it out of bounds for the tourists. The lack of infrastructure including road accessibility, mobile network and transport facilities serve as major hindrances for even the domestic tourists who are left disappointed. Sayahat ki baat kare to Wazirazam ka ye vision bhi hai sayahat ko promote karne ki baatein kar rahe hain lekin amli kaam hume kuch nahi dikhai de raha. Sadak ki agar hum baat kare to sadak ki intihai khaste hal hai sayahon ko yahan tak pohunne mein sakht tarin mushkilat ka saamna hai. Iske alawa yahan ki jo hotel industry hai usme bhi kafi hat tak kaam karne ki zarurat hai. Kisiya wo sawal uthate hain yahan par riyaish ka khas purpas nahi private sadak par beshak hotel industry furok pa rahi hai lekin sarkari sadak par bhi inko hotel industry ki taraf par tojhne ki zarurat hai. Aur jis sadak ke upar hum safar karke aaye hain ye sadak bilkul safar ke laayak nahi hai. To subai hukumat se hamari guzari shay ki jab tak gizar expressway ke upar kaam shuru nahi hota is road ki marmat ko furi tor par yakin bana jaye. Locals say with proper policies and planning by the Pakistan government. The tourism sector can give a major boost to the economy of the illegally occupied region. However, it has remained backwards and underdeveloped due to the apathy of the federal government of Pakistan over the years. In news from Nepal, Nepal resumed domestic flight services with 50% seating capacity from Thursday after the Himalayan nation had suspended the flights in May this year as part of the lockdown steps taken to prevent the spreading of the coronavirus. As many as 5,601 passengers took service on the first day of the resumption of domestic flights on Thursday. After a span of over two months, the domestic terminal building of the Kathmandu airport in Nepal on Thursday bustled with activity again as the Himalayan nation resumed domestic flights with 50-person seating capacity. Regular domestic flights were suspended from May 3, days after prohibitory order was imposed in Kathmandu Valley due to the spread of COVID-19. Passengers were seen taking precautions by wearing face masks and face shields as they reached the airport where 64 flights were allowed to operate daily. Air service providers have made it compulsory for all the passengers to fill up a declaration form on their health history before the airline issues a boarding pass. 
सेनिटाइजर पनि थियो यो भाइजर पनि दियो सबै ठाउँ ठाउँमा एक एक मिटरको दूरीको कायम गरेर सबै प्लेनमा आउने जाने गरेर आयो मेन वाइल नेपाल रिपोर्टेड वन थाउजन्ड एट हन्ड्रेड फिफ्टी सेभेन कोरोना भाइरस केसेस इन द लास्ट ट्वेन्टी फोर आवर्स टेकिंग द टोटल टेली टू सिक्स हन्ड्रेड फोर्टी थाउजन्ड सिक्स हन्ड्रेड सिक्सटी टू द कंट्री वाइड दैट टोल हेज नाउ रिच नाइन थाउजन्ड वन हन्ड्रेड फोर्टीन द नंबर अफ Moving on to news from Sri Lanka, hundreds of turtles have washed ashore after a ship caught fire and sank off the west coast of Sri Lanka in June in the country's worst ever marine disaster, a court in the capital Colombo heard this week. The captain of the container ship who is accused by the Sri Lankan government in the case over environmental damage done by the ship made a court appearance in Colombo on Thursday. The captain of MV Express Pearl container ship that caught fire and sank off the west coast of Sri Lanka causing a major environmental disaster made a court appearance in Colombo on Thursday. Tut Carlo Vettelli, the Russian captain is among 15 people including the chief engineer and deputy chief engineer named as the accused by the government last week in the case over environmental damage done by the ship. In a hearing to update the court on the investigation, government lawyers said 176 turtles, 20 dolphins and 4 whales had died because of pollution from the ship. Whitley had previously been released on $10,000 bail and was banned from leaving the country. The Singapore Register MV Express Pearl carrying 1486 containers including 25 tons of nitric acid along with other chemicals and cosmetics was anchored off Colombo when a fire erupted on board. after an explosion on May 20 the Sri Lankan government has made an initial insurance claim of 40 million dollars for the cost of putting out the fire and for the loss of livelihoods for an estimated 50000 people mostly fishermen the insurance company has made an interim payment of 7.2 million dollars to compensate fishermen court has been adjourned until July 15 As masks have become indispensable accessories of the present era, people are coming up with different designs and styles to keep themselves safe. An astrologer in northern India has got himself a unique mask made of gold to encourage people to wear masks properly and curb the spread of coronavirus. An astrologer in India's northern Kanpur city has come up with a unique mask made of gold to encourage people to wear masks properly and curb the spread of coronavirus. An avid lover of everything made from gold, Manoj Sanger got the gold mask made for himself after the second wave of COVID-19 caused huge losses to life. The mask weighing around 101 grams is worth 5 lakh rupees. Sanger claims it has a sanitizer solution inside which will work for 36 months and gives better protection to the person who wears it. Abhi aap dekha corona ki dusri lehar aayi badi ghatak rahi hai. Jan manas ka ka bada nuksan bhi kiya hai. To humne socha ki ek ek mask hum bhi banwaye aur saath mein pehna bhi de logon ko. Ki aaj kal dekha wo log mask banwate hain, pehente hain, ladka lete hain. Dusra sanitizer coating mask hai. India on Friday reached the grim milestone of 400,000 deaths from the coronavirus, half of them during the second wave in the past few months. Cases tally in the world's second most affected country stood at 30.45 million. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. One soldier killed five Lashkar terrorists gunned down in India's Jammu and Kashmir. US forces leave Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan after 20 years. And domestic flights resume in Nepal after 2 months gap as lockdown curbs ease. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button